Today, I'd like to talk about limiting beliefs. I just did a, a podcast yesterday um, and um, prepared some notes for it that you can see. And I'd like to talk about what are four ways to fix a limiting belief. Now, of course, I cannot go into your specific issues, but as coaches, we have limiting beliefs about ourselves. Um, and we have limiting beliefs about others. And the same is true for our clients. Now, some of our limiting beliefs are just lack, a lack of education. The problem is, is to learn something new. We first need to become conscious of the fact that the belief that we have is wrong, is not reality tested and is limited. Okay. Because then we can go, well, what is it that I'd like to believe instead? You need to become conscious of that initially be not so good at it and have this really strong override um, into your old habit and your old belief but if you plow on through and you keep consciously switching on to learn this new thing then eventually you become more competent at it and if you keep on going then then becomes your new autopilot pilot it's your new habit is your new muscle that automatically takes over. So that's a, that's a big piece. And so I think becoming aware of what your limiting beliefs actually really are is a, is a very positive thing. Okay. So that's tip number one, how to get rid of a limiting belief. Seconding way, second way to get rid of a limiting belief is, is, is about understanding what a limiting belief is. And, and where in terms of how we use our conscious and unconscious mind, where it actually really rests, okay? So first of all, a limiting belief, a belief is, any belief is something we trust to be true, okay? So the most conscious that we, that we are um, in terms of what's happening around us and within ourselves is our immediate environment. Right, so right now I'm standing in my living room and I'm looking at my phone and I see behind me a Joshua tree. Okay, so that is my immediate immediate environment. Um, I'm super conscious of that; it's readily available. And right above that rests um, my behaviors. That behavior can be internally my thoughts. And it can be also externally, uh, my engagement with the world. In this case, with you right now, I'm still fairly conscious of it, uh, but less conscious than my immediate environment. Then right above that is skills and capabilities. See, I'm not necessarily thinking about my skills and capabilities right now, but I'm still kind of have an awareness, fairly conscious still, that, that right now I'm talking about something that I, I did prepare, that I do know a lot about, have been teaching for a while inside my NLP training uh, and other workshops, okay? So um, those are skills and capabilities. Um, I also take official training myself as a student. Um, but then we start to get into waters where we tend to not really think about tend to be fairly unconscious on autopilot. And those are our values and our beliefs. And so our values and our beliefs, well, I think the way that to look at a belief is that if your value is the rack with the little hooks on them, the belief is sort of uh, hangs on those hooks, okay? So our beliefs are, are in essence, uh, a segue in our values between what's above, uh, what's in our, in our unconscious mind and versus the lower level end of environment behaviors and skills. So our beliefs hook into our values. I do believe that even though our beliefs can be limiting and untrue, our values are true. There are the deep unconscious values that we stand on. So I'm not necessarily talking about religious or societal or uh, uh, um, uh, family values. I'm talking about the foundation that you stand on that connects you into the greater good, the universe source, okay? So those are our values. And when we meet those values perfectly, 
where all systems go, we're happy, we're in well-being. Then above that, and that's really unconscious, is our identity, who we are, right? So our values, leading a life true to our real values, and actually having beliefs that truly support these values, then we start to grow into who we authentically are. Uh, we start to develop that identity, that self-awareness as to who we are, that personal evolution into become who we need to become, which is a lifetime, right? And then our identity connects into our purpose and meaning, our source, whatever we call that. So, the, so we go from environment to behavior to skills to beliefs, values, identity, all the way into source. And we go, in essence, from conscious to unconscious. So how does that relate then, relate then to fixing limiting beliefs that you either have yourself or the people around you or your clients do? Well, first of all, you can make a boatload of changes or a change, change in the lower end, in the more conscious pieces. So, for instance, you could change your environment. You can go maybe more into nature more. Uh, you could maybe engage with more with certain types of people rather than other types of people. Uh, an environmental change is also going to travel, even move abroad. That's so, why it's so important that you pick the right friends. Can't pick your family, but you do need to manage them so that they become in line with your own values and you may need to protect yourself or surround yourself. Um, but it's important, who do you spend time with, right? So that's your immediate environment. Where do you work? You know, so your environment will, in essence, facilitate a limiting belief shift. It can, it doesn't have to. You could also try and change your behavior. Again, like I said before, that's a reconditioning, a relearning, a learning a new habit. So you could even set a goal on it if you would want to and order through that to achieve your goal. I promise you uh, some goals in itself, when you reach them, you start to believe entirely different things about yourself or others. Think about someone who loses an insane amount of weight or someone who finishes uh, a, a, a big project like an education that took four years or, or, or a big trip or whatever your goal is. So that can be really life-changing, right? And so, um, so behavioral change, as well as skills and capabilities, taking a training. Um, that's why I think when people in, uh, are in my NLP training, they're in a different environment because we do it on beautiful locations like Bali, uh, like the center of Amsterdam, like the beach in Los Angeles, uh, like the beach in, in Mexico, is you're learning all these new skills in the way that you think, feel, and behave and therefore also believe. Um, and so that can be a huge shift. So changing something in environment, behavior, or skill set allows for uh, allows for a possibility for beliefs to change. So it's important that it may trickle up, it's not a rule. So it's important that you you really step into the right environment in the right place and, and things like that. So if you need help with that, I can actually, if you're not a coach yourself and you need a coach, I can recommend coaches to you. I've trained over 2000 of them who can help with this. Okay. Anyway, another way to go about it is a way that your beliefs may change that rather than to focus on your beliefs is to actually focus on your values. What are your deep unconscious values? And if you start to lead a life true to your own values, then that can shift in your beliefs. If you start to really become true to your own identity and your connection into source and your service to your source and your purpose and meaning, so the, 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 the pieces that, that are above and more conscious, if you work towards that, then it will trickle down. Any real place of authenticity and connection to source and who you're meant to be and your values will trickle down. And so that's a way to, to change that belief. Fourth way to change a belief is a belief is almost a little bit like a, like a behavior, okay? 
So a behavior or a belief in this case has a positive intent that underlies it. You know, so we get something out of having this belief, right? And, and it's, a, it's often phrased like a value, by the way, but it, it's, it's phrased in a positive word. Common words are really things that relate to things that are very basic, like safety, security, protection, love, nurture, acceptance, things that relate to being seen, things like that. So it's about this limiting belief that you have, even though it may cause racism and even judgment, and even though it may cause low self-esteem and low self-regard, what is the positive intent really unconsciously that you're trying to serve? And a way to figure that out is to close your eyes and pretend to be in a trance. You can do that right now if you wish. And I want you to imagine that you could float this limiting belief that you have out of your body. So it sits right in front of you. Now, what would it look like? Does it have a shape? or a color, or a size. And if I were to touch it, would it have a texture or a temperature? Or does it maybe have a weight to it? Does it make a sound? Okay, so what I want you to do, and do this in your mind, otherwise you sound like a crazy person, is I want you to ask your gut, your internal sense, your internal knowing, your unconscious mind, your higher self. So I'm not interested in thoughts or logic or reasoning or a perfect answer or a scientific answer. I want you to ask it, this thing, this object, this manifestation, this representation in front of you, a question. What is the positive intent behind it? What is the positive intent that you have by having this belief? What is it that you get out of it? I don't know if you can or not. Some of you can, some of you will be able to, some of you won't. But I want you to ask that representation in front of you also the question, at what age were you born? And then open your eyes. Okay, so this is a very simple technique that I teach in NLP Master Practitioner, but it allows for most of us, not all of us, for most of us to really get a deeper sense as to what we think we get out of having this limiting belief. And I trust me on it, that it becomes hugely complicated to solve this limiting belief unless you meet the positive intent first. So that is a little bit of a itty bitty mini training on limiting beliefs.